Hey there, what's going on everybody? Thanks for joining us today on Cinema Recap. Glad to have you here. So today we'll be recapping this family fantasy film called Help, I Shrunk My Teacher. Spoilers ahead. We start by meeting Felix. He's currently fast asleep, dreaming of flying a plane. The implication here is that one day, Felix wants to become a pilot, but the dream's cut short by Felix's father. He rushes in and wakes Felix up, screaming about it being the first day of school. The two rush to get ready, and if we needed any indication that this guy might not be a winning father of the year, we see it when he tries to give Felix an ice block for breakfast, breakfast. and then later on when he's shaving and making a phone call while driving. Jesus. Now as they drive, we get some much needed exposition on Felix and why today is so important. He's over here playing a video game on his phone and his father's chastising him for doing so. Felix is a worse student than his father's a dad. And this is his last chance at joining a school and making his dreams of being a pilot come true. They arrive at the new school, called The Auto, an old school building ripped straight out of a horror gothic novel. Weirdly, the school looks to be completely empty. And if you thought things were going to become less odd, then I have a bridge to sell you. Soon, Felix and his father end up in the principal's office. Principal Schmidt, or Schmitty, as the kids call her. She's a cliche, stuck-up type, complete with a tight bun, big glasses, and a cold glare that she uses liberally. Immediately, she's cold towards Felix and his father, and she tells him that, If I am to be honest, I doubt this is the right place for you. Ow, Schmitty, tell it like it is. Luckily, however, the school has a policy which just lets Felix scrape in. Seeing as Felix isn't that bright, he's now on a three-month probation period before he's officially enrolled. But Schmitty here informs him that one slip-up will see him expelled. Before Felix gets to class, however, we're served up a nice B-plot. School inspector Henning bumps into Schmitty in the hallway, and it's clear right away that they don't like one another. She dismisses him really quick, informing him that she's really busy. All furious, Henning storms away only for the doors to slam in his face, which we suspect is the work of the door-knocking gargoyles, whatever they are. And it's now time for Felix to go to his first class. Oh, wait. Before we even get there, Felix's father has to give him a prep talk and how to deal with Schmitty. And, well, it's a little odd. If you have any hassles with her, then just imagine her naked. Nice one, Dad. Now it's time for class. And Felix is relieved to see that, despite how odd this school is, the children seem normal enough. Well, that's until he has the pleasure of meeting the class bullies, although the leader is the only one that matters. His name's Mario, and from the scarf he's wearing to the red puffy hair he sports, he's a real dick. Listen, frontman, you can wait at the back, man. Shockingly, Felix is actually kind of cool and dismisses that lame joke. The teacher arrives, and of course, it's Schmitty. Class gets off to a bad start for our boy Felix as Schmitty calls him up in front of everyone to perform some basic math equations and, of course, Felix has no idea what he's doing. But rather than helping him, his teacher decides to shame him in front of the entire class for being stupid. I am not very good at math. After class, Mario and his cronies approach him. They pretend that they're friends now, but first Mario informs him, If you want to join us, you have to pass three dares. The first dare is rather simple. It's to break into the old teacher's lounge after dark. The catch being that this school is supposedly haunted. Felix points out that it's basically breaking and entering, but the bullies don't care. They mock Felix again and walk off, and where a normal person might not want to be friends with Mario, this is a movie, so Felix knows he has no choice. Now that night, Felix succumbs to peer pressure and breaks into the school. Little does he realize that Schmitty's there working late, and flirting a little bit with the school janitor. Not that she seems to realize it. Anywho, Felix does as he's told, and breaks into the old teacher's lounge which turns out to be a pretty odd little room. There's a painting hanging on the back wall of the school founder, Otto Leonard, as the fact that his eyes and mouth move as Felix walks around the room. Felix finds a cool looking ball sitting in a weird looking bowl, and as he studies it, Schmitty walks in. She accosts Felix and starts to berate him. Breaking in, lying, stealing, it's over for you. All but confirming that his time at this school is done. As she's going off, the ball begins to move in the bowl. Then it catches fire. Meanwhile, Felix takes that earlier advice from his dad and tries to picture Schmitty as, well, take a look. We don't know what he's thinking exactly, but there's a puff of smoke, and the next thing we know, 
Schmitty small, shrunk down to the size of a Barbie doll. Before Felix has a chance to realize what's happened, Mario and the others turn up. Hearing that Schmitty's in the area, they all flee, but not before Schmitty accidentally takes refuge in Felix's bag. Back at home now, Felix confides in his father. He tries to explain that he might be getting kicked out of school for the dare he was forced to do. However, when he gets to the fact that Schmitty just sort of vanished in front of him, he doesn't know what to make of it. As Felix complains to his dad, Schmitty escapes from the bag and tries to figure out what is going on. But first, she attempts to visit the bathroom, and when she sees the toilet is 20 feet high, she takes a more drastic measure. A bonsai tree. How quaint. Felix and his father are interrupted by a call from his mother. She's back in the States working, but she worries for Felix. He and his father lie to her and tell her that everything's fine, because Felix's dad is a terrible dad and would rather lie to his wife than tell the truth. The next morning is where the story really takes off. Felix wakes up to find Schmitty in his room, standing over him. But then Felix realizes that this actually was his fault. Schmitty doesn't seem to believe him, but for now she's far more concerned about breakfast, so he carries her downstairs and makes her a sandwich. As he starts up, his father appears and Felix has to hide Schmitty, which he does by literally knocking her onto the bread, smearing it with cheese, and then encasing her in that sandwich. With Schmitty now part of his lunch, Felix heads off for school. Now Felix, deciding that it isn't worth it, throws his lunch and teacher into the trash, but then notices the garbage truck coming. A moment of conscience and Felix decides that he doesn't want to be a murderer today, so he picks her back up. Now back at school, Henning is giving a tour to what look to be wealthy investors, as he's telling them about the future plans for his school. We will be able to create something quite unique here. As he's carrying on, the ball from earlier starts to spin, and the bowl catches on fire. The janitor hurriedly puts that out with the extinguisher, dousing everyone in white foam, but drowns that fire and puts it out. Now about to sneak into the room with the hopes of turning Schmitty big again, Felix pulls up when he sees Henning in the room. Schmitty tells him to go in and kick Henning out. Felix rightly points out that he probably shouldn't help her, seeing as she's going to expel him, right? But she points out that if he doesn't stop Henning soon, there will be no school to expel him from. So Felix sneaks in and tries to kick Henning out, but Henning laughs this attempt off. Don't make me laugh! <laughs> to make matters even worse, but really more convenient, Henning then confirms with Felix his entire plan. This news obviously catches Felix off guard, and he confronts Schmitty, who tells him that although Henning is indeed trying to close the school, he'll have to get through her. But Felix, ever resourceful, has a plan. With a math test coming up, You're gonna help me pass this exam. Our boy plops himself next to the only girl in class, Ella, who tries to strike up a friendship, but Felix is far more interested in his pencil case. Ella, the nosy little girl she is, keeps trying to peek into that case, but can't see what has Felix's attention. Anyways, the test gets underway and Schmitty seems more concerned with how easy this test is, so much so that she still refuses to help him. Stubborn much? That's until Mario leans over and butts in. Dare number two. You'll write our test too. Schmidt is shocked by that. And then she realizes that Mario is Henning's son, and she inexplicably decides to help Felix write their tests. Now during lunch, Felix stops in at a doll store to pick up some new clothes for Schmidt. While there, Ella from class bumps into him. She wants to know what he's doing, and he claims that he's buying a doll for a friend of his. He tries to ditch her using some skateboard maneuvers, but she's up to that challenge and easily keeps up with him. In his effort to flee, Felix comes off his skateboard and lands right on his bag with Schmitty inside. He hurriedly pulls her out and finds her passed out from that fall, pours water all over her to wake her back up. It's now that Ella pops up again seeing Schmitty for the first time, and as expected, she isn't shocked at all. She forces Felix to tell her everything. I don't have a choice, right? So the two sneak back into the old teacher's lounge in an effort to finally turn Schmitty back again. He gives it his best go too, but nothing happens. Ella asks him what happened last time. What was Schmitty doing when she shrunk? Schmitt explains that she was getting ready to expel Felix. It's now that the magic ball begins to work. Seeing that ball spin, Felix rushes over just as it catches fire. They know the magic has something to do with the school and its old headmaster, Otto Leonard. And Schmitty then tells him that she might have more information back home. The kids get to Schmitty's house and commit some light breaking and entering. And while there, we get a little insight into Schmitty's life and, like we probably expected, she lives a lonely, pathetic life. 
She also reveals that her dream was to go to the States and do some physics research over there, but wasn't brave enough. She pretends that she doesn't care anymore, but it's clear that she would still want to go. I used to love it. Just me and my books for days. Now the kids find Otto Leonard's old books and start to do some research on the school, hunting for its secrets. While doing said research, Felix realizes that the ball that they were using can be opened. And what's more, it has Otto's ashes in it. As soon as he opens that ball, the ghost of Otto suddenly appears. Turns out that he knew that people would come along one day and try and take his school from him. So he brewed a little potion to stop that from happening. In order to fight anyone who dares to optimize my ideas. This should probably be good news, but Schmidt realizes that she's the one that Otto's trying to stop from changing his ideas. That she might actually be a villain. Shocking. She's mortified to find out that she isn't well liked. Somehow she thought that all the nagging and bickering and rule following would make her popular with the students. They tell her that she can change all of that by enrolling Felix. But again, she's refusing. I don't think she wants to be liked. Now that night, Felix does some digging through maps that they found at Schmidt's place. And he's discovering that there's a whole maze of rooms underneath the school, all dedicated to making learning fun. Schmidt refuses to believe that. And before heading to the school, Felix manages to convince Schmidt to finally enroll him in school. Meanwhile, back in class, it turns out that Felix failed that test that Schmidt was supposed to help him pass. Even worse, he wrote for Mario and his cronies. So, they all failed. Dead feline. And after class, Mario chases Felix to the playground and jumps him. They wrestle a bit, ending with Mario stealing Felix's bag with Schmidt still in it. Now Mario's home when he discovers that the doll that looks like Schmidt is in fact Schmidt which means that he instead attaches her to a dartboard, starts throwing razor-sharp darts at her body. <coughs> now real lucky, just before he straight up kills her, the doorbell rings. Felix and Ella stage a break-in to get Schmidt back. To do this, Ella distracts Mario at the front of the house, even suggesting that she might want to join his group. And soon she has him insulting his best buds. Chris's parents are revolutionaries. Even better, Ella was recording him the whole time. And when she shows him the recording, he chases her, which allows Felix to slip into the house and save Schmitty from the dartboard. In order to get out of the house though, they stage a breakout using a drone to trick Mario. Back at school, Henning's meeting with the school board to let him know of his plan to close the school and turn it into a school for elites. Felix, however, cuts him off and presents his enrollment. Now, Henning can't close the school, but Henning sees the signature, assuming it was forged, and tears it up. And then just to add salt to that wound, he tells Felix that Schmidt doesn't care that the school's being closed because she applied for a different job ages ago. But as he's passing through the old teacher's lounge, he sees Schmidt in her shrunken form. Well, he freaks out and the ball and fire reappear and a moment later, Henning shrunk too. Before they can do anything about it, the floor opens up and swallows the two whole. Ella tries to tell Felix what happened, but he doesn't care anymore. He realizes that Schmidt doesn't care about him, so why should he care? Ella's trying to get him to stay. Felix, please! You can't just walk out on me! But he's gone. Schmidt and Henning wake up to find themselves in a dark room. And even worse, there's a skeleton in there with him. The old principal. Ella's refusing to give up, though. She traces the steps from where Schmidt fell through the floor and follows it downstairs into the basement. There, she finds a way back into the room, but it's blocked and she needs some help. So she hurries to find Felix, but runs into Mario and the bullies. Classic. Back home, Felix is feeling pretty down, but a well-timed call from his mother saves the day. She delivers a message to him that applies exactly to how he's feeling right now and sees him realize that he has to go back and help. So he rushes back to the school and finds Mario and his cronies down in the basement. He's trying to explain what happened, but they're not buying it. Felix then thinks quickly, reveals to the two cronies what their leader, Mario, was saying about him. Ella then plays that recording, and wouldn't you know it, they switch sides. Working together, the kids move the blockade and reveal a passage that leads into a secret back room. The one that Felix found on the map earlier. It's just as they're about to climb through that Mario comes back. Turns out that he got a message from his dad, which proves that Felix was telling the truth. Now as Felix and Ella and the others are trying to get to the room where Schmidt and Henning are, Schmidt and Henning are being hounded by the school's cat, who seems to think that they just might be his next meal. In an effort to keep that cat at bay, Henning pulls out a lighter, which sets the whole table on fire. Now they're surrounded by a cat and a wall of flames, but 
but the kids are on it. Each room features a puzzle of sorts, one that needs to be solved before the door to the next room opens. The first room is a geography puzzle. Kids have to work together to figure out where certain landmarks are. The second room has a maths quiz, which Felix realizes he can solve. As he does so, he accuses Schmitty of lying and trying to leave the school, but she's assuring him that she doesn't want to, that she's changed. And just as she makes that character arc, Felix solves the final puzzle and opens the door, <laughs> allowing for them to rescue the small teachers just in time. When asked who's responsible for saving the day, Felix pulls all of his friends into a hug. Actually, it was all of us together. Back in the teacher's lounge, they get to resizing the teachers. The only way they can do this is by swearing that they won't close the school. Schmitty agrees right away and is brought back to her normal size. It takes Henning a little while to get through, but eventually he does, begging to be returned to his regular size so long as he doesn't close the school. You know, for real, they should have just fed him to the cat. Oh, and that janitor turns up here. And after a little bit of flirting, Schmitty asks him out. Because why not? Fast forward a few months, and the school's looking like a new place. They're having a fair to celebrate the rebranding of the school. A happy place where kids can learn and have fun at the same time. And the good news keeps on rolling. Felix's mom turns up out of nowhere, revealing that she moved back home for good. I feel like the big winner here is Felix, who doesn't have to rely on his deadbeat dad to look after him anymore. What a happy ending after all. Yeah. Thanks guys for chilling with us on the recap of Help I Shrunk My Teacher, released by Blue Eyes Fiction in 2015. So, if you were small for a day, how do you think you'd spend it? Let us know with that hashtag cinema recap in the comments. Thanks for chilling with us and as always, till next time.